Hello and welcome to the MAIDEN webinar. This webinar will be looking at the IAPTA system and the changes we have made to meet the requirements for the new NHS version 2 dataset upgrade. As a result of the upgrade, we have introduced several new fields into the IAPTA system, changed some existing fields on the system, introduced some new questionnaires and developed a collection of reports to help you with the version 2 monthly data submission. This webinar will be looking at where those new fields are, looking at the existing fields to be changed, and looking at where those questionnaires and reports can also be found. I'm now going to locate a fictitious patient within our demonstration system so I can show you where the fields are that have been affected by the upgrade. Each time a patient is entered onto the IAPTA system, a series of forms are provided where data can be collected. A key form for this is the patient registration. I'm now going to edit the registration for our fictitious patient in order to show you the new field that has been provided here. As part of the upgrade, a new field has been introduced, which is called the education establishment type, which can be found just beneath the long-term condition fields. Also, another field which is now forming part of the core version 2 data set, which is already in existence, is the preferred language. And this can be found just above. And if you do not already have this field switched on, please contact your account manager at Maiden so we can make the necessary arrangements. Moving on to another collection form, the Referral Data tab. Again, I'm going to edit this form in order to show you the new fields. The new field that has been introduced here is the Social and Personal Circumstances field. And here, multiple options can be recorded for a patient as required. There is also an existing field, and again, if you do not already have this on your system, please contact us. And this is the Overseas Visitors Charging Status. Another collection form is the Care Pathway form. And again, some more fields have been introduced here as part of the upgrade. These can be found just below the section where you can move people through your care pathway and they're part of the onward referral section. In here, you can see we have an onward referral reason field, a healthcare provider referred to field, a date and time of the decision and a date and time of the referral. Key collection form within the IAPTA system is the clinical contact where therapists and clinical staff can record sessions with their patients. Again, several fields have been introduced as a result of the NHS version 2 upgrade. I'm just going to create a new form and indicate where these fields are. A new field for those who were previously part of the long-term condition pilot run within the NHS is the integrated IAPT LTC service indicator, which as you can see is the mandatory field with the two options of core and integrated. Other fields that have been introduced as a result of the changes include the language used for the delivery of treatment, the interpreter present, the result of the contact being a planned appointment, the internet enabled therapy program for those services who are using online providers as part of the therapy. Moving on down, some additional fields here as well, such as a self-employment indicator, a sickness absence indicator, which is known as whether the patient is unable to work due to sickness. And then further down, as a result of the new questionnaires that have been introduced, there are also drop down fields for the body image questionnaire and moving down the PCL5 questionnaire, which is a replacement of the IES impact of event scale. Existing fields that are now forming part of the core version 2 data set within the clinical contact, which you may or may not already have switched on, include the weekly hours worked indicator, 
the statutory sick pay indicator, the job seekers allowance indicator, the employment and support allowance indicator, the universal credit indicator, personal independent payment indicator, and then other benefits receipt indicator. These are all the relevant fields that you should need when you are capturing core clinical contact details for your patient. Again, if you do not have these fields currently switched on, please contact your account manager at Maiden so we can make the necessary arrangements. We have also renamed some fields within the clinical contact as part of the V2 upgrade. And I would like to show you these now. These include the face-to-face -face communication mode field, which is now called the care contact patient therapy mode, the receiving benefits field, which is now called the benefits receipt indicator, service type, which is now called integrated IAPT LTC service indicator, and problem descriptor, which is now known as presenting complaints. New questionnaires have also been introduced as part of the version 2 core upgrade. These can be found within the clinical contacts. Once a clinical contact has been saved, services can choose to fill in questionnaires online. And the new questionnaires included for this are the body image questionnaire, the PCL5 questionnaire, which replaces the impact of event scale, and then two versions of the IPCQ, both the full and short question versions. In addition, there are also new patient experience questionnaires, one provided after the assessment has taken place and also the one once treatment has been concluded. Part of the flexibility of the IAPTIS product is that services can choose to configure the options within the various drop-down fields that we provide for collecting data. We then provide a mapping tool to ensure that that data can be translated across to the requirements of the NHS and the options descriptions that they provide. I now want to take you through to the mapping area where the new fields will be impacted as part of the Core 2 upgrade. The list management mapping tool can be found within the super user menu. And once services click on this tool, they will be provided with a selection of fields available for them to configure to their requirements. Several existing fields within IAPTIS will have new mapping options as a result of the Core 2 upgrade. Some of these can be found within the generic data set, whilst others you will need to click and actually select the IAP data set in order to view them. Fields that will have new mapping options include the referral source, discharge reasons, consultation mediums, appointment location, gender, preferred language, onward referral reason, and the primary presenting complaint. Once you have located these fields within the mapping tool, you will need to click on them, scroll down, where you will see new mapping options being presented that you will need to review and update as appropriate. I'd like to show you where you can find the new IDS reports developed by Maiden that allow you to capture the data as part of your monthly submission process. Within the main top menu area of our product, you should see an icon called Reports. Once you click on this, you should have the option to go into Hypercube and if you then go into create new reports, you will then be able to find the new IDS reports. All the reports will be prefixed with the letters IDS and will all have version two to indicate these are the ones that you require. We have also introduced some new therapist qualification fields. These can only be seen when you are logged in under your therapist IAPTIS account. Having logged in, if you go to my account and scroll down amongst your details, you will see a section called employee qualifications. In here, you can select the qualification from the attainment level field. 
and then you can either complete qualification awarded date or if you're still working towards your qualification, you can add the planned completion date. You can then simply click on the add button. I'd now like to show you a useful dashboard report that we have built for you. This helps you to identify those items that require a mapping update. Once you have gone into IAPTUS, you now need to click on to reports. And having done this, you should see the two options, Hypercube and Dashboards. We want to visit the dashboards. Once you've clicked on the dashboards, you will have a collection of workbooks presented to you. And the one that we need to go and look at is the data quality V2 underscore zero. Click on the green bar with this description. The system will now open in a new window that will show you the dashboard. And this particular one just contains one report for you. It's important to note that the information here is all based on the V2 requirements. I'm now going to click on the little arrow next to the item which says list management, lists which require MDS mapping. Like most of the dashboard workbooks, you'll see a collection of filters available to you at the top of the screen. And I'd just like to go through these with you and also discuss the other items that you are seeing on your screen. The first filter is for the data set. List management items, depending on the nature of your system, can fall into several categories. But for the V2, there will be two data set items that you generally need to be aware of. One of these is generic. And then the other one, if you click on the small drop down list, will be IAT. And you will need to select the relevant one. We're just going to look at generic for the moment. The next filter that you have available is called the list mapped status. And again, you just need to click on the drop down. The drop down tells you about all of those mappings, some of which are complete and therefore will not need addressing, but more importantly, those where the mapping is still required. The next option, again, is talking about the list item status. And again, if you click in here, you can see that it's actually showing you where it thinks that some items have been mapped and some that are still saying change me. It is the change me items that are important. They will need updating in order that your V2 reports will collect the appropriate information and pass on to the NHS and ensure that you do not receive the validation issues as long as these have been done. The final filter we have is the item status. When you are aware of your items in list management and you are looking at a particular category, you will have some items which are active and some that you may have previously archived. And this is what this drop down is indicating here for you. Underneath, you'll see that we've got on the left hand side some list character category statuses. These are all the different fields that are actually available in IAPTUS, and you'll notice that some are showing in red. These are the ones that we are indicating that something needs to be updated within the list management items. Depending on the item that you have selected on the left, you can then see more information related to it over on the right hand side. At the moment, I've not selected anything. So you can see it's actually showing each list category status and all the items within it one after the other. But if I were just to click onto a single one on the left hand side, on the right hand side, it will then just show you the items for that particular one. In this example, I've clicked on accessibility information status. And over on the right, you are now seeing the various options that have been provided. The name, these are the options you'll see when you click on the drop down for that particular field. And then next door to it, the MDS values that have been mapped against it. So how can we identify those items that actually need to be addressed? First thing we can do is within the list mapped status, the second filter along, we can go in here and untick 
so that all we have left showing with a ticked item is mapping required. Once the system has registered this, re this filter, you'll notice that over on the left hand side now, we just have the red item showing. Next, I'm going to go onto the list item map status, the third filter along. And this time, I'm going to ensure that the only item ticked is the one that says change me, not mapped. And this is absolutely fine. Once it's loaded, it will show you each of the fields, each of the values that you normally see in the drop down. And then you can see there are several items all saying, please change me or potentially the value of null as well. This is now indicating the fields that you actually need to go and change. And if you wish to focus on one at a time, you could simply click on that particular item over on the left hand side. So I've just clicked on accommodation status and I can see all the items that I now need to change. At this point, you would go over to your main site within your super user menu, find the list management option. You would ensure that the data set you're looking at matches the one on the workbook. In this case, generic, which is the one we want. And then finally, we're going to go and look at the field that the data quality was warning us about. In this instance, it was the accommodation status. Click on it, and then it's important to carry on scrolling down the screen. This will then bring you to a small table showing you the items that you currently have. The list value is the item that you'll see when you click on the drop down for the field when you're in your patient's records. And then you can see to the side of it the MDS mappings. If you click onto where it says, please change me, a small warning message will come up asking if you want to change it, which you can click on OK. And then the drop down list will now show for the MDS mapping. You click within that list and pick out the relevant option which needs to go with your list value description. Once you have actually gone through this list and updated it with all the various items, you, all of the please change me's would have been updated and you now need to click on where it says save list data. You would then go back to your workbook and then progress through the remaining list. It's important to remember that the dashboards are refreshed overnight. So any changes you make to the list management will not be reflected in this report until the following day, at which point you should be able to come in here and see that most of your items have in fact been changed. One other important thing to notice is the very last filter, which is currently reading as item status active. Within list management, it is possible to archive an entry if you no longer wish to use it. However, it's important to note that if you did this for any items from the 1st of September 2020, they may still require a mapping update as data within September could still be collected for your V2 reports. It may therefore be worthwhile making sure that there are no deleted items available. This you can do by putting back all the filters to all and then changing the filter in the very last box so that only deleted is then ticked. This will indicate any fields that you previously archived and if you're not sure you need to go and check each one. When you're looking at those archived items, so in this example we've got sexual orientation I'm just going to pop back onto my main site and my list management so I can look at sexual orientation. When looking at your archived or deleted list items, the only ones that really need to be updated are any that have been updated since the 1st of the 9th, 2020. Any archived items prior to that date would not be related to data that you're collecting for your V2 reports from the 1st of September onwards. If you wish to update them all, you are, of course, most welcome to do so.
I hope that helps and that this dashboard will be useful for you as a service to appreciate any items that still need a little bit of tweaking to make sure they can meet the V2 requirements. Thank you for listening. If you do have any more queries around this, please don't hesitate to raise a support log so that your account manager at Maiden can be of assistance.